welcome back now. Just before you decide whether to prioritize debt repayment or savings, you must first thoroughly understand your current financial situation. Only by assessing your exact standing can you determine the best path forward. Now, public affairs um, analyst Mustafa Ewinla joins me now for more discussion on this. Uh, thanks for joining me, Mustafa. Thank you for, thank you for having me. All right. Uh, it is really, really sad to note that um, the bulk of uh, what Nigerians spend right now is actually on food items and um, other households like medical and all that. People are pushing savings or investments to the background. Even some, they don't even consider saving anymore. They just live from month to month, you know, whatever they get, so long as uh, they can uh, put food uh, on the table for their household, at least that is like um, sufficient for them. How do you react to all of that? Well, thank you. Thank you for having me, Justin. So, uh, again, is our conversation today is uh, a very vital one because mm. um, we've, also, we've all witnessed the hardship that virtually all Nigerians are you know, going through as, as we speak. Mm. And uh, even the rich are also crying right now mm. because um, feeding, living is becoming almost impossible. Mm. Just two days ago, I lost a friend of mine who committed suicide. Whoa. Because the, f the wife left him because he has financial challenges. And this guy woke up, wrote a note, and took his life just on Tuesday. I mean, just on Monday. So that tells us that people are going through a lot of hardship right now. So we have to even start checking on people's mental we health. We have to start checking on people. Divorce rate is alarming. Unemployment rate is alarming. Crime rate is alarming. Poverty is also increasing by the day so it brings us to a state where a lot of people needs to be checked on every other time people are going through a lot of difficulties right now and that's because if you look at what has happened you see i think our government uh, to be very honest for me i'm i'm very disappointed and that's because most of our policies like we have always said are policies that are that are taking us back as a country Oh. The genesis of this whole hardship and poverty started when FERB subsidy was removed last year. Mm -hmm. Cost of energy went up. And when, as soon as the cost of energy went up, the prices of other goods and services and food items went up. Insecurity is also a problem that led us to where we are today. Our local farmers cannot even go to farm freely because of the fear of getting kidnapped on the road or getting killed on the road by kidnappers or insurgents or what have you so savings right now is almost very impossible that's the honest truth savings right now having any savings right now because a lot of people have have started dipping hands in their personal savings just to augment for the difference in the food hike and you know look at what has happened last week price of fuel was increased from what we used to pay to almost i to 1,000 naira per liter. Some even buy more than that in some states. Some are buying 1,000 naira per liter. Oh. So these are issues. So as soon as first, so, so I think that one of the major mistakes that this government made was removing first subsidy without having any proper plan oh. in place to augment or to cushion that effect of removing first subsidy. Oh. And that and this, what is happening now, what is playing out now, is the ripple effect on the economy. I would have even thought that um, because as at um, this morning, you know, yes. the, the price of um, oil in the international market has actually dropped to about um, $70 um, per barrel. That's um, the worst um, uh, the, the one in the UK, uh, Brent crude and all of that, in the US rather. But the, the challenge is that um, over time, if the forces of demand and supply had yeah. uh, gone into play before now, Nigeria should even be buying fuel, you know, at a cheaper rate, knowing yes. that the price um, internationally has gone up. Um, I know countries like Kenya, South Africa, you know, are doing the same, you know, when the prices drop internationally, over time too, it also drops in the local market. But then, it's as though the forces of demand and supply economically or economic um, parameters and statistics don't just apply with the Nigerian factor. So that will happen. So, and I think that, and I think that if you have, if, if for those who are economists, if you have seen what has been playing out since 2022, in 2022, our gross domestic product was about 472 billion US dollars, which was the highest in Africa as at that time. Oh. Now, fast forward to, to this year, our gross domestic product is 253 billion US dollars. Yeah. So you see the, the ratio of decline is very, yeah. very alarming. 
a country like Algeria has a GDP of 266 billion US dollars. Oh. Algeria has just 49 million people. Nigeria, we are over 232 million people because some people keep saying 220. I think we've moved from, if you, if you even ask me, I think we've even moved from that 220 to, to 230 or 240 or 250. But I think a census will help us in that area. But I can tell you for, for sure that we are more than 220 million in Nigeria. Yeah. So uh, Algeria has 49 million people and they are doing better than Nigeria with, with a GDP of 26 two billion US dollars. Yeah. Nigeria right now, we are 253 billion US dollars, yeah. which is like the fourth in Africa. So that's why I said it last week that we have lost that position to what we call ourselves. Oh, we're a giant of Africa. We're not giant in anything right now. Mm. So I think if our government really wants to help, helping or solving this situation is not by sharing bag of rice. Sharing bag of rice to everybody or selling bag of rice at 40,000 naira per, per bag. Or, mm. Those are not solutions. The solution is for the government to provide jobs. Okay. The solution is for the province to create an enabling environment for small-scale business owners. Mm. The solution is for the government to reduce the pump price, reduce the cost of energy. Mm. In, a, in a country where we pay so much for energy, I live in Lekki Phase 1. Yesterday, I practically slept in darkness. No light. No light. A place like Lekki Phase 1. So you can imagine those living in the rural areas. Mm. That means those ones will be living in darkness for almost forever. Okay, so, so, yes. so, so what really happens, uh, yes. you know, with this current scenario? Because you said that uh, it's not by distributing banks of rice uh, you know, to the household. Yes. You know, because elementary uh, economics that uh, we were thought back in the day, people demand money basically for transactionary, for precautionary and speculative. Yeah. Speculative basically because of investment. You like, uh, uh, let me put money here in uh, 30 days or 90 days. Yeah. I could make this, you know, which is speculative. But right now, it's basically about transactionary from day to day and all of that. So what happens now when, uh, you know, Nigerians are spending the bulk of all they have on food? What happens up to saving for the rainy day or maybe in case something comes up and um, they really need money to to, to, to sort out or they need, uh, you know, finances to sort out those issues that were not planned. Because right now, you know, we still have challenges with them, health insurance and all of that. Most people, they pay for their medical bills from out of their pockets. So, so I've said it. Savings right now is almost impossible. In a situation where our current food inflation right now is about almost 39.53%. Mm. General inflation is well over 30%. So how do you want to have savings in this kind of environment where... And we're still talking about the minimum wage of 30,000 naira, 70,000 naira. So, mm. so just I think we need to live in our realities. It is very difficult to have any savings right now. The only people that can boast of savings right now are maybe, maybe are politicians or, or people who, who perhaps have other streams of income. Okay. But that's why I was telling Nigerians also, you might be a salary earner, but I think it's high time you look in look outward by you know having other streams of Multiple income streams. to augment your salary that you're collecting. Yeah. Don't take your salary and exhaust everything from from month to, uh, you know yeah. month to month. Take part of it, invest in other small 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 scale businesses that will be generating income for you. That's the way to go now, yeah. because from that salary right now, it's very difficult yeah. to have any savings if you are not careful. CBN is saying that Nigerians are spending 54 percent on yeah. food, 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 medicals, and other essential needs. That's yeah. the truth. I more from my own opinion, I even think it's more than fifty five percent because than that. Yes. because on, on my for if I have to take myself as an example. Was spent on essential need, food, medicals, and clothing, and all that, rent, and all that. I can say that we're spending almost 90 percent on. Okay, so this is a this is a very dire situation that the country yes. and the households are really facing. Yes. So, what are the real implications? Like Nigerians cannot really say for obvious yes. reasons. What they have cannot really take them home. They take home, like most yes. people would say, yes. cannot take them home. Take so, what happens to the yes. economy? What happens to the household? What happens to uh, you know to in to the industries because most of the times uh, they would actually rely from um, savings that are in uh, are deposited in the banks. In the so bank. banks can actually loan out to you can, um, to you know diverse aspects of the economy. So what happens really? What are the ripple effects you know that we are likely to see when uh, savings and investments are dwindling? Yes. Yeah, so the ripple effects I've mentioned some of them. The ripple effects are very very many. Mm. And what will happen is that we will now see an increased spate of people who are struggling, struggling to live, mm. who are suicidal. I've shared a case of a friend who committed suicide just a mm. few months, ago, just a few days ago on Monday. Mm. We will now begin to see an increased uh, rate in, the, in crime rates. We will now begin to see an increased rate in the rate of unemployment because as, as it is, even business owners are struggling to even pay salaries. Mm. 
just like the government is struggling to pay salaries, business owners, individual business owners are also struggling to pay salaries. We have state governments who haven't paid salaries for, for, for months. Oh. Just so, so the same way we have individual business owners also who are struggling to pay salaries because there's no business. Oh. Everybody's feeling the pinch. So those that want, those that will naturally bring, bring business to your doorsteps are even finding it difficult to generate business this day. So it's difficult. Oh. The economy is right now is... If, 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 if I can say is, is moving to a comatose. That's yeah. the honest truth. So because now for somebody who, who, who runs this organization with a sum of say hundred thousand naira monthly mm. before first subsidy was removed, now you are spending almost a million or even close to eight nine thousand naira to run the mm. same business and at, at a very huge cost and there's no inflow. Mm. So a lot of businesses that are, yeah are relying are falling back to debt now. They are they are in debt mm. and that's that's why the economy is becoming more harsher than it used to be. So I think that. I think that we cannot, as a country, as a country, if we really want to move this country forward, we cannot continue in this in this order. The government again needs to give business owners a sort of grant loans for exactly. them to be able to function properly. Oh. We've seen what happened during COVID nineteen. Loans were given out in the in the in the, in the guise of COVID nineteen loan. Business a lot of business owners did not receive that loan. Oh. Everything was coffered somewhere along the line. And these things did not happen in, in the United Kingdom. People, people got loans. Even businesses that were not functional mm. in the UK got 50, as high as £50,000 loans. Mm. Just, uh, just make sure you have a registered business mm. name. They were giving loans to, and, and they give them ample time for repayment. Mm -hmm. But in Nigeria, what we, are, what we are seeing is government is announcing that they're giving out loans. Some people are siphoning the loans. Mm. The loans are not getting to those who actually need them. We've seen, we've seen even, even the issue of the bag of rice they keep sharing for the smallest things, the share bag of rice. Mm. We're talking about first of the, the government to share bag of rice. We're talking about every slightest issue we have. The, the only thing they think of is give them food, they'll keep quiet. No, we're not, we're not hungry Nigerians. Mm. What we want to see is, this, is a country that works, a country where there, there's, 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 there's unemployment, I mean, there, there, there's employment, yeah. a country where everybody is gainfully employed, a country where I can wake up, go to work, come back, a country where there's security. One of the I've said is one of the, one of the biggest issues we are having right now. Are we're not, we're not, we don't have an enabling environment. Our oh. farmers are, are not able to even go to farm freely because the roads are not safe. Yeah. So give these farmers, give them an environment that is enabling. Give them fertilizers. Give them um, tractors to work with. We saw the we saw a certain government that was sharing tractors. That's the way to go because oh, a, so, so to share to mean to to to. to to, to, to agricultural farming now is almost very, very expensive. That's why you see most of the farmers taking loans for them just to have it. And okay. some, some industries will open, they can barely survive for one year. Even businesses, go to Lekki, go, to, go, go around the island, you see businesses that will spend millions of money to open in the first one year. Mm. The second year, they're shutting down shutting because they, down. Cannot they cannot continue. Overhead expenses is killing them. Okay. Cost of running, cost of even paying salaries, cost oh. of even getting... So, I think, so. I think that the, the government needs to have a committee okay. to look into this sector. We cannot, we cannot, if we miss it with our economic, with our economy. Oh. Economy is what takes us forward as a country. Economy is what makes, what attracts investors to come into this country oh. and do business with us. So if we continue to, if our con economy continues to no nose dive in this direction, yeah. we're going to scare people out of this country and it's already happening. Okay. Microsoft left this country just a few months ago. We've seen many other companies yeah. who have left just because of the the, the harsh conditions and the environment that we're running businesses with. Okay, yeah, so let's look at another another um, aspect to it yeah. now. You know, people cannot really save, you know, and some still uh, just manage the little bit. What about yes. others who have actually resorted, you know, to to borrowings, you know, yes. to meet um, transactionary purpose, and over time, they now have, um, a, you know, some sort of um, revenue come in. What would you advise them to do? as against uh, using the bulk of all the monies they have to settle their debts, or do they do some sort of rationing to pay for the debts, to repay debts, or to, uh, to get um, household expenses, or to even get some to even keep for the rainy day? What, 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 what would the mix be like? So it's not a bad thing to borrow. To, it's, not, it's, a, it's a very, very good, good initiative to borrow for business. Okay. Naturally, if you want to go into any business, you borrow, you share the no, risk you yourself. For consumption, really. You borrow, but you don't borrow for consumption. You don't mm. borrow to pay salaries. You don't mm. borrow to, to get what I mean. You borrow to produce. Mm. Dangote borrowed money from his brother to start to, to uh, during the first time, the first early years of his career, 
the story is all over the is all over the internet. So that's how he that's how he borrowed money from his brother and mm. he started the company and look at what Dangote has become today. Mm. So it's not so it's not a bad thing to borrow to start business, but don't borrow to consume. When it, when when if it's not when if it's just inevitable, what do you do? So 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 that's that's <laughs> exactly what we have in place right now. People mm. are borrowing for consumption. People mm. are borrowing to cook. Mm. People are borrowing to to feed. True. People are borrowing to pay school fees. I was yes. in the bank yesterday. I was I I heard somebody telling somebody that he had to go and borrow money from all these online sharks mm. just to pay school fees. Mm. So ha so he's not borrowing to 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 to, to do any business. Mm. He's borrowing to offset bills. Yeah. So that's why. And if that if that kind of if that pattern of life continues, people will you will start we will start seeing a lot of depressed people around because how do you want to pay back that loan? Mm. You don't have any means or any business that you want to do with that money. You have paid for school fees. How do you want to pay back that loan? So those are the issues we're having. So okay. I think that. Again, we will not continue talking. The government has to do something. Right. We cannot continue in this pattern. If we are not careful, we are going to move this. This country is, is going to head for the rocks. Mm. Something has to happen. This we are talking about human lives here. Yeah. There must be food. There must be job. There must be job creation. There must be food. There must be everything that makes life easy for people must be available. These are these are essential things mm. that we cannot do about. If somebody wakes up and is hungry, he mm. will be hungry naturally. Yeah. And somebody who is angry, that's why a I'm hungry crying. man is an angry man. That's why crime rate is increasing. Look at our youth today. A lot of they become four stars. Mm. And so those are issues. And you cannot. What do you want to do? Do you, do you have any alternative for them? No. Uh -huh. So the government must do something. That's 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 my take. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mustafa. Indeed, the government has to look inwards and sort out this <laughs> issue of um, poverty in the land and the people even going to bed without um, food in their stomach and you know just living from hand to mouth trying to make um, ends meet uh, boring to pay school fees boring to even feed because at the end of the day if you don't have uh, people who are productive your economy actually suffers, suffers. thank you so much uh, Mustafa, thank you for, you for your thank time you for all right uh, as we go uh, a bit of advice here if you have a standing debt but also have disposable income you may struggle to decide whether to use that money to pay off debt or to save it in these situations the best approach is to often uh, compare the financial uh, impact of your uh, your earning interest on your savings versus reducing the interest accruing to your debt a balanced approach such as splitting some people might say you need to split your income to your debt but as much as possible most of us have said that you don't have to borrow for consumption or borrow to pay bills at the end of the day you know you match your debts with uh, you know your investments are so uh, the investment will actually be what you'd earn you know to actually pay those um, um, uh, debts um, or borrowing in the first place that's the size of the show for today i am justin academia many thanks for being there Thank you.